Okay, Doc. So another question. Um, hello. Thanks for the great info you guys uh, are putting out there. I recently suffered a ruptured patella tendon and I uh, recently came across a claim exogenous testosterone administration uh, claims. Yeah. Uh, exogenous testosterone administration can have a negative impact on collagen synth synthesis. I've had a hard time finding any hard data supporting connective tissue degradation connection in connective tissue. Could Dr. Rand touch on this topic? and also on other anabolic, which might aid in connective tissue health, in which uh, might be harmful to connective tissue. I had been uh, administrating a testosterone label as 250 milligrams, which is probably on the ground. Who knows what it was actually, uh, what it actually was. But I used it twice a week for total 500 a week. I used it uh, roughly for nine weeks with no other anabolics, as this was my first cycle ever. I should also note I am 25 years old male, who. Uh, who have been lifting for roughly eight years. My injury happened while being tackle playing a prick, a pickup game of football. I've had many issues with knees, pain, but never anything serious before. Do you believe there's a connection between testosterone and my injury or it's just co uh, coincidental? Thank you again to the both of you. That's a hard one without seeing the injury and knowing a little bit more. And I could ask some more questions if it's infrapatellar or superpatellar. Uh, but boy, I could probably make a pretty good guess as to what happened. Uh, at 25 years old, I don't know why someone, you know, 25, certainly that's not a replacement therapy dose or you wouldn't think a typical 25 year old would need replacement therapy. But the first thing that comes to mind is, hey, you're developing still at 25. I mean, I think the cutoff is still officially 26 before you're officially uh, an adult, or you stopped growing. You uh, said you know. 27. Or they shouldn't be using anabolics until 27. Right, because 26, 26, you're still you're right. still growing. Uh, I think that's still the line they draw in the sand. But um, my point is, what we've talked about for years in in the weightlifting athletic world is, you know, you can develop your muscles much more quickly than you can the, the ligaments and tendons. So, I mean, isn't that, isn't that the first thing that comes to mind? Is hey, you went on a nine week cycle. It's certainly kicked in by the sixth week. Uh, even though you've been lifting for eight years, all of a sudden, it, there's no mention of what the strength or weight gains yeah. were, mm -hmm. but presumably you got stronger and it probably overtaxed the, the patellar ligament um, or tendon, excuse me. Again, where is kind of important was it the, you know, the, the infrapatellar or the superpatellar tendon that, that gave way? Uh, what, you know, was it a traumatic injury? Was it just a pull and it pulled off of the, yeah. you know, the infra uh, pulled off the tibia? Uh, but again, my guess is, yeah, it probably had something to do with it just because uh, you got too strong, too fast. Yeah. The, the ligaments and tendons take longer. We've known that for a long time to strengthen, unlike muscle tissue, which can grow pretty quickly. The other part of the question is what can you do? Uh, a lot of bodybuilders have for a long time done testosterone uh, or an anabolic steroid with growth hormone. Growth hormone, while it can help grow muscle tissue, really focuses more on the other soft tissues uh, and organs, you know, skin being an organ, mm -hmm. but also, um, you know, the ligaments and tendons. Um, so both in terms of repair, uh, you know, anything he can do to help build up his own levels of, of growth hormone, which would involve high levels of uh, protein, as you know, as, as part of it. It's, you know, hormone, growth yeah. hormone is a peptide hormone. In this yeah. case, we're talking about protein. something for protein. Protein, glutamine. Uh, but then uh, would testosterone have necessarily broken down the tissue? No, I've never heard that before. If anything, testosterone will help build certainly muscle tissue. Um, it, you know, again, it's an anabolic, so I yeah. wouldn't think it would add to destruction of the tendon. Again, I think it's more from what we talked about. Yeah. And there was mention of prior knee problems. Again, these are all things that confound my simple curbside analysis of what might have happened here. But I suspect that's probably what happened is, uh, I'd love, you know, I don't know if we ever get follow-up letters, but you know, 
sort of answers to my questions to fill in the blanks, but I'd love to hear some of the... the uh, Doc, you get so many questions, I can't even, even think about doing follow-ups. Well, it'd be great to know, but for my sake, as a nerd who loves to answer these questions, yeah, it'd be great to see some of these things, uh, you know, fleshed out a little bit more to find out really I may what have it was, to do two but... shows and ask the Doc, and the Doc wants to know. Doc Holler, yeah, right, there you go. Well, I'll think about that, you guys. Don't, it's not done yet. All right, thank you, Doc. <laughs> All right, Doc, here's another one for you. So, hello, Dave, I'm 32 years old, and I'm weightlifting since uh, for about 11 years old. I think, he, I think this person is actually French. Uh, so, just natural for 11 years, um, serious, with good nutrition, never took any steroids. I noticed that I hit a plateau, and I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about uh, taking something. Uh, I would have a doctor for that. Uh, I don't want to put that big, uh, that, that big, I don't want to put, that much muscle on, maybe eight kilo. He's obviously from Europe, so about 16, 16 20 pounds more muscle mass, and be ripped all year. I'm about eight percent body fat right now. Uh, so, short question: What is for you, uh, or what is it? What's your advice for putting on the safest? Oh boy, <laughs> what is it for you exactly? The safest way to use any steroids? What sort would you recommend? Doses or combination cycle, it would be fine. I would be fine with low doses, uh, just to get a bit more muscle mass to improve further. Uh, what do you think about MK six seven seven, which I think we covered before? Uh, we talked about it before. It's a SARM, right? I would be so happy to get an answer. Uh, I would be really happy about it. All the best. Well, you're not going to like this answer. I mean, the the, the, so the first <laughs> part, um, you know, under doctor supervision is kind of the no brainer answer. I mean. At 32, without knowing the testosterone, I mean, clinically, again, we're, we're and I've said we, we treat people, not numbers, but clinically, apparently there's some signs and symptoms of low T, then let's get numbers to back them up just to make sure that it's not 1,200 total T and a free T of, you know, 24, right. and we go, okay, well, we missed something here. It was your thyroid that was off or something else. So, again, while I say often, probably too often, you don't treat numbers, treat people who still use the numbers to back up and support what's going on and rule out or rule in certain things. Uh, so assuming that uh, you're in need of testosterone replacement therapy, then again, under the doc doctor supervision is the obvious best way of doing it because you can monitor your labs. You have somebody presumably who's qualified to give you advice as to, you know, what you need. And that could involve, I mean, there's so many things that aren't even being considered here. I know right. he's focused on physique, but what about fertility? What about testicular atrophy? At 32, have you had children? Do you want to have children? Right. Even if you told me you didn't, I'd say, well, let's make sure. Or, you know, I mean, you, you get my point. Yeah. So, uh, again, I know you're not going to like the answer under doctor's supervision because that leaves it wide open. But it is still the appropriate answer. Um from there, I mean, it's up to the doctor. If you, you say he's uh, French, I don't know what the laws are there, but, um, you know, there are indications for for anabolics, obviously. This guy sounds like he's already in fantastic shape. Please send back what you're doing to stay, <laughs> you know, very muscular, you know, 8% body fat. I'd like whatever help I can get. We all want to get as much help and pass on what someone else is doing, uh, even if it's just anecdotal. As far as the... Um, what uh, he, he was referring to ibutamorin is how I go by. What is it? MK six seven seven. Yeah. Ibutamorin is great. Ibutamorin, I can tell you more about. Um, ibutamorin is a peptidomimetic, which is a fancy way of saying it acts like a peptide, but it's not. Mm. So you can ingest it. It's an oral, mm -hmm. um, and it acts to get the body to produce more growth hormone. It's a right. growth hormone releasing peptide mimetic, if you will. Yeah. Uh, so it acts a lot like um, some of the GHRPs 2 and 6, which yeah. are on the market. Yeah. And uh, it works through the stomach, which is an interesting, you say, well, has it has growth hormone through the stomach mechanism? Yeah. Through um, something I still don't know how to pronounce, ghrelin is how I call it. It's a weird, a G-H-R-E-L-I-N. But that's what makes you hungry. And um, so you want to take ibutamorin on an empty stomach, but right before you go to bed, so you can presumably, hopefully, sleep through any hunger that you might mm -hmm. uh, feel. Um, a better combination would be some, a growth hormone-releasing hormone analog like uh, somorlin, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. that works through one mechanism, obviously growth hormone releasing hormone, mm -hmm. uh, and then this um, peptidomimetic, again, working through a different mechanism. Uh, I've seen pretty incredible results using the combination of, for example, again, somorlin and either G the GHRPs or ibutamorin. The thing is, we don't have an oral for the real peptides. So, you know, I recommend an injectable if you're going to use a combination because you always have to already have to inject yourself anyway. Yeah. But ibutamorin is pretty convenient because you can travel with it. It's an yeah. oral, people who don't like needles. Yeah. So hopefully I'm giving you something out of that question. Again, the other one's kind of hard to answer because it's, a, it's kind of a wide open question. If you need replacement therapy, then yeah, I mean, there's a whole gamut you got to run through to figure out what's going to be best for you. Yeah. Thanks, Doc.